Hey guys, what's up? Stock Retail coming back to you. Uh, had a lot of things on my mind that I would love to make videos about, but today we are going to be talking about the latest and greatest, not so much, but the latest court case. Uh, I'll go through the documents. Um, believe it or not, it's not a, uh, I don't know, hobby of mine to read court case documents. I do not enjoy that. But I do it because I'm an owner of this company and this stock, and you are with me. We as retail own this company, we own this stock, and I want to know what's happening to me and to you and to our company. Um, so I will go through those court docs. I'm going to talk a little bit about some price action today and some things that have been playing out about like I thought they would. Um, so yeah, let's just click in and go through. Before I do, um, I'm giving you my take on reading some court documents. I am not a lawyer. I've told you that before. Um, Got a fair amount of new followers, so forgive me if you're, you've been around here a while and you hear what I'm about to say, you've heard it before. Um, but for the new followers, my background is a little more in finance, operations, planning, forecasting, supply chain, this kind of stuff. So I'm not a lawyer. Uh, you know, I do have two master's degrees in business in that sort of, I don't know, process of jumping through those hoops and reading lots of books. I did have some business law classes. Um, but that does not mean I'm any kind of expert on business law or Delaware law um, or anything like that. Um, and in particular, in equities, markets, law, and all of that. That's what we're dealing with here. So I'm just going to give you a dude's opinion and a dude's take on this. You know, maybe I have some qualification, but I am not an expert in this. So you're going to have to do your own DD and dig elsewhere and get second opinions and all of that. All right. So let's go through. First off, how did we get here? Um, in the initial settlement, if you noticed, and I even did a video on this, when Judge Zern first denied the settlement, you remember that moment, um, the reason she denied it was you in there, there was a release of all claims, both for AMC holders as a class of people and APE holders as a class of people. You're going to hear me talk a little bit today, um, and I'm sure you're sitting there, many of you anyway, are sitting there saying, what do you mean two different classes of people? I hold both. Apes love AMC. We hold AMC. We hold APE. We're one class, you know, of apes. Well, in the eyes of the court, there basically are two classes of stockholders, is how this has been playing out. Uh, there's the AMC stockholder, that's what that whole settlement argument was about, and the APE stockholder. So even if you and I hold both and we don't see it that way, and I'm going to talk more about that, um, that's kind of how these arguments are taking place. So what happened is the original settlement released all claims. Well, releasing a claim, see this little sub bullet, means there's just, you don't have a right to bring any future lawsuits about this. And so what Zern said is, you guys were representing the AMC class but remember, it was a class action. A class action represents a group of people or a class. Um, that settlement was representing the AMC common shareholders, which is, you know, the settlement then paid out the dividend of AMC common shares, uh, which I've talked about before and, and I'm glad about. I get some of those shares myself. Um, so when Judge Zern denied the release of claims for APE, because the problem is, the ape class wasn't the one that settled in that case. So she said, you, you don't have the right to, to deny them any future claims. My first thought was, oh, geez, we're going to get more lawsuits for the ape class. And sure enough, here we are. So that's why we're here. Um, one thing I had thought and kind of it, I'm in some group DMs on Twitter, talked to some people there. Um, we had exchanged some thoughts. You know, one thing I felt was, um, <coughs> excuse me, your... You know, if you're a holder of APE, you are greatly benefiting. Um, I suppose that depends on the timing of when you got your APE. Obviously, we're down from when it was distributed. Uh, I still believe we're going to go back up. But if you've been buying APE, then you've been buying essentially future AMC at a discount, which was also part of the whole argument in the last settlement. So one of my thoughts was, well, if you're benefiting on APE, it's pretty hard to bring a lawsuit when you're benefiting. Uh, but we're going to talk through how that is happening. All right, so what's in there? I'm just gonna pull up and give you the summary and not as many screenshots as usual, though I do have a couple screenshots for you. Uh, you can go out and find the case. There's a few apes who've posted it or you can probably just Google and find it. What I see in there, I'm just pulling out some highlights for you. Um, so the, the plaintiff, the person coming with the case is arguing, well, hey, AMC Common Shares is getting that settlement dividend. So we've talked about that. Um, and basically says, hey, that's not fair for ape holders because 
uh, effectively, if I go to bed one night and I own a certain percent of the company with my ape, I wake up the next morning and I don't own the same percent of the company because more of it got diluted into the AMC common shares before my ape converted. Which, by the way, matches kind of how I've, I've told you how this all works. Um, you can go see my calculator video or a video from way back when um, in May on kind of how all of the reverse split and settlement and conversion works. And that's what they're saying is like, hey, you're giving the settlement to AMC shareholders. So basically, when I wake up the next morning, uh, if I only owned Ape, my Ape as a percent of all the shares went down. Now, it's a weird argument because we're going to end up re-arguing the entire history of Ape. Uh, the last case argued that it was Ape that made AMC holders have less of a percent ownership in the company. Um, and I am going to talk about kind of what I'm starting to see as sort of the chess pieces on all of that and what they're trying to do. But let's get back to that later. So they're arguing that this settlement dilutes ape ownership. That's that third bullet here. Um, it utilizes the language of past filings. So they're trying to make their case by using all of the uh, AMC filings on ape in particular and how preferred equity shares work. Uh, so there's a lot of, they're saying, hey, there's contractual obligations because of their filings in the past that say what this is. Um, you know, effectively, the AMC board and uh, executive team communicated the legal rights and sort of the, I don't know, monetary rights, uh, economic rights, let's call it, of APE. Um, and so this case is trying to say, I'm holding you to that. Uh, the reason I bring that up, if you really, really want to know all about APE, um, I have a pretty darn long Reddit post I had done when it was created. So you'd have to go all the way back to like, Oh, probably July of last year, you could find that one. Um, and over time, that one's kind of proven true. Like, I'll just give you an example. In there, I had said there were no options. Um, there's some other stuff in there, basically all about how Ape worked and all of that. So um, it, you could just go find what is it that they're using as all the language for how Ape works that they're trying to hold AMC accountable to, in effect. Um, they're seeking, by the way, so this last bullet, this seems kind of important to me because one of the questions I'm getting and that I had myself even is, is this going to further delay the reverse split and the conversion and all that? I'm just going to be fully transparent with you and say, I'm not totally sure, but I'm reading into, they're seeking a permanent injunct injunction. Um, and you note my notes here that does not seem to, so there's, sorry, let me back up. There's kind of a, a few different types of injunction. So there's this permanent injunction that just says you're kind of forever held to the ruling on this case. There's a temporary injunction and a preliminary injunction. Sorry, guys, I'm struggling saying that word that many times all at once. Um, basically, a temporary or preliminary, those are the kind that can end up holding up, um, you know, pausing, stopping the action. So I am hopeful because they're seeking a permanent injunction. This does not delay this corporate action, but I need to show you some other language we're going to go through in a minute that does have me just, I've got some questions on maybe it will. Okay, first of all, um, you get trolled a lot. I'm even still seeing some of the supposed no voters, although I do not think they're actually no voters. I think they're shorts and I think they're paid actors. Um, on Twitter, there's some famous ones who I won't name, but just think of all of the people who have been a thorn in our side. You know, there's a reason they're a thorn in our side. They don't care about the company. They care about, you know, I think, their short position and or the people paying them to say things. Well, those people quite frequently say, um, you know, the vote was stolen, we voted no, it wasn't really a yes. Um, you know, in the last settlement uh, case, you could have seen this, and now it's in this one again. And the reason I highlight this, when you submit data to the court for a case, that's official, right? Your data better be correct, and it's going to be questioned, and it's got to stand up to the scrutiny of the court. Um, this matches some things that I have already published in the past myself as well. You can just see this in the results. And so I just want you to know, like, here's an official court document highlighting the fact that of the people who voted, so there were 182 million votes, 132 million voted yes, so up from the common stock, right? So one of the things the trolls argue is, oh, they stole the vote with Ape. But of the common stock vote, you can see 72.5% voted yes. There was a bunch of um, abstain votes too, so they weren't all, the rest weren't all no's. And the point is, 
It was basically, and I've said this time and again since the initial vote, you can just see it in the numbers. From the AMC common stock, we, I say we because I voted, we voted at a rate of like three to one. Yes is outnumbered no. So of the people who actually took the time to vote, there were three times as many yeses as there were no's. That's in both court cases so far. Don't let anyone ever tell you that it was like ape stole the vote. The AMC common shares voted three times as many yeses as no's. That's just point of fact. It is not debatable. All right. Um, here's what the guy's actually asking for, this plaintiff. They're basically saying, I want the same settlement on ape as you gave on AMC. Uh, now, if you go back to when the settlement was denied, the, the AMC settlement, I had said, I thought one of the things they would have to do was to um, work out some kind of settlement for both classes. And that's what this case is trying to bring, that, hey, I want a settlement for ape. Now, the problem is this is going to get you into chasing your tail or some kind of circle, uh, an endless loop. Because the first case argued that AMC as a class, AMC holders, were uh, kind of hard done by, by dilution using APE. And so the, they're kind of being made whole by, by getting effectively 13% more shares. Now notice this 1.13 here on APE. Well, that's 13%. So if you argued a case and settled a case by giving your AMC holders, you know, kind of saying, all right, fine, we're not going to necessarily admit that we diluted or anything like that. Um, we're not going to admit to any wrongdoing, but we're just going to settle this case. It never went to trial, remember, um, which is why Al is looking pretty stupid because he keeps talking about a mistrial and some other stuff. And it's like, yeah, it, it wasn't even a trial. This was a settlement. Um, anyway, if you settled a case with the AMC class, to basically give them more of the company in effect, which is now what this case is arguing about, then you turn around and you give the same thing back to Ape. All you've done is kept them the same. So you, you kind of, in a way, nullify the settlement you just had. And so you can see, they're, I think they're trying to set this up into some circular thing, because if uh, Ape, if you have this settlement, then the AMC class can come back and say, wait a second, now we're back to square one. Uh, so you can just see, I think they're trying to trap us in a loop. Um, that's how I take this. They're asking for this to happen at the same time as when the AMC settlement happens. So in effect, you basically, again, keep, if you give more shares to APE and you give more shares to AMC, nothing really changes for anybody in terms of the percent owned. There's just more shares out there. So they're also kind of messing with the float at this point and they're messing with the cost. This is co gonna cost the company money. Um, in fact, let's talk about that a little bit. There is language in this uh, case, and again, I just really hope this case is thrown out, quite frankly. But there's language in the case that says, all right, well, if you don't agree to give us this settlement in shares, then we ask that you give it to us in cash. So I just wanted to tell you how much this would cost. They're asking for this 13% more APE shares. Um, so I just did the math, figured that out. Uh, based on the settlement with AMC and how many more shares there are, what would it take to get APE back to kind of the same percent and this whole 13% thing? Well, here's what this would cost. Um, if you were at 30 bucks post reverse split, this would cost the company $400 million. If you were at 40 bucks, it would cost 500 million. You can see this, it kind of goes up by a little more than, or yeah, a little more than 100 million each time. If it was 50 bucks, it'd be $660 million. So here's the other thing you can see. They're really trying to drain the company of cash. In fact, let's look through. So just see through the tactics of what's going on. And you could research, just simply Google, like the methods of, um, you know, predatory short sellers. One of the methods they'll use is just endless court cases. So we know who's doing this. This is not people who care about the company. This is not people who care about you or me. Uh, my opinion is this is short sellers. And so was the last case. These are people using delay tactics and trying to bleed the company dry of money. Um, so it's, it's going to be time at some point for us to use every legal means necessary to fight back against these people. I'm, I'm pretty sick of it. Um, and it will be time to put them on notice that apes don't mess around. And again, I mean legally. Any legal means, let me make that really clear. Um, all right. 
So here is what I believe is being done to us. First, there's a clear attempt over time, and, and I'm predicting this in the future. Um, you can look forward and just kind of imagine where they're going. They're attempting to create two classes between us. They want apes divided. They want us just as... Um, actually, I'm going to hold another thought. But anyway, they're attempting to divide us so that AMC holders see themselves as a class and ape holders see themselves as a class. You can kind of hear how dumb that is because the vast, vast majority of us hold both and frankly care about the company and not the class of shares. Uh, they are attempting to drain AMC of cash. That's pretty clear. Their problem is we're one group of apes, right? And we own both. I own both AMC and ape and I'm holding them and I really care about the company. So bottom line, you know, for us to win, and I've talked about this many times, as has Adam, um, our win requires the company to win. And as apes, as retail stockholders who, you know, we say we own the float, this is our company. So we support our company that we own. You know, you've heard some of the, let's say, you know, famous sayings like a house divided against itself cannot stand, right? Um, there is no shareholder ever who attacks their own investment. That also tells you, uh, you know quickly who's on which team, right? You can tell who is against you by who is fighting against the good of your company. These are not, you know, they claim to be fighting for AMC shareholders. No way in heck. That's not true. Because if you care about AMC shareholders, then you want AMC shares to go up. And if you want AMC shares to go up, then you need to support the company making profits. And if you support the company making profits, you don't put it through endless lawsuits, you don't drag it through the mud on social media, and you don't try to drain it of cash. These are not people fighting for you, these are people fighting against you. I really hope you start seeing through the Owls, Marines, Ethans, Pet Rocks, Citizens, I should probably name 10 more and I'm just not thinking of them, South Sink, whoever you want to think of, these are people who are against your self-interest. And it's time for you to start standing up and dr like drown them of attention on social media. Stop listening to them. We support our company. I do not want this payout for me because it will cost the company. And I'm going to be researching how to fight this. And I just recommend that you do too. Um, all right, let's switch topics. I'm tired of talking about court cases. I guess in summary on the court case, I'm still hopeful it does not delay us. If we're able to move forward, then I have faith that everything's going to get worked out. If we get delayed again, then it's just like, all right, we keep fighting. You know, the company is at least in another profitable quarter as far as I believe. Um, and as far as I forecast, I'll share more on that another day. So we're fine. I'm not worried. I'm just tired of this, right? And it's probably so are you. I want this to be over. Uh, but I will never quit either. Like, when I say I'm tired of it, that I'm going to keep going. Um, but, you know, I'm still hopeful we move forward and that it does not delay us. And so we'll just have to see in coming days. Although, we, you know, it's right around the corner. So the, the court's going to have to act quickly or this thing just happens on its own, which I wouldn't mind. Let's talk a little bit. Let's switch gears. I want to talk a little bit about price action really yesterday and today. Um, and um, just us not let's call it kind of not stabbing ourselves in the toe or poking our own eye kind of a thing. Uh, especially if any of you is trading at all. You know, most of us, I think, on this channel and certainly my Twitter followers, we're more into HODL, right? We care about this company. We care about winning. The original thesis was always, I can hold longer than you can stay solvent. Um, there were basically other language around, I can stay dumb longer than you can stay solvent. And I am going to talk about liquidity here in a minute. Uh, so let's just talk through a little bit about what's been going on. If you had kind of woken up this morning, followed the market, and if you just looked, I guess you can't see me. I probably need to someday start turning a camera on myself. But I'm hiding like the right half of this, the line on this chart. And so you can imagine, just look at the left half, kind of what I'm highlighting here. And you'd be like, ah, oh, crap, we're going down, down, down. Ah, oh, this sucks. What's going on? And we all kind of were seeing it. I saw some posts and I agreed with them that this looked a lot like a ladder attack, a short ladder attack. It just was too harsh and too consistent and at uh, just a pretty convenient angle. Looked like high frequency trading mixed with spoofing, wash trades. That's kind of part of the high frequency trading and ladder attacks. Um, but 
I had also seen yesterday, and if you looked at yesterday's chart, remember it was also harshly down, and then by the end of the day we were green, pretty strongly green. And so I had kind of told some people, again, in sort of DMs and things like that, like, hey, I, you know, I got a feeling that we maybe repeat yesterday, and who knows if we end up green again. And then I had seen this sort of cup and handle kind of forming. I am no expert trader, so if you're an expert, let's say, day trader charter, I just kind of do it for fun. So if, if you disagree with me that that's a cup and handle, that's fine. I don't care. But that's kind of what I saw. I was like, hey, maybe this is a cup and handle. I DM some people. And then sure enough, by the end of the day, right, we were green today. So the thing is, if you let intraday or even intra week, sometimes even intra month price action dictate your feelings, you're going to make some really weird decisions. You know, if you had sold down here, you'd be regretting it, right? Because look at like the high and the low of the day. We were all the way at 384 at one point and as low as 347. I think that's, I forgot, like 10% ish. Uh, gap between those um, or if you really just look and the point is like when Judge Zern approved the settlement the first video I made I think it was only like four minutes I just kind of shared some thoughts and I said hey look forward to volatility I really believe you're gonna see a lot more volatility for a while well sure enough today from open to the low was it we were down six points then from that low to the end of day you're back up another eight points from there so you're moving all over the place a lot more. And the thing is, if you're kind of, I don't know, call it an OG ape, or you're someone who's been around a long time, um, you know, I, I have said on this channel, so in case you're new here, I'm kind of a December 2020 slash January 2021 ape. You can kind of see the receipts from me on Twitter and Reddit. I've been around a lot longer there than on YouTube. Uh, basically, just finally got on YouTube about a year ago because uh, you can ramble a little longer here than, than what you can on tweets. Um, but here's the point. If you've been around a long time, you remember days of volatility and you remember that, um, you know, I'm not holding for 375. I'm holding for something a whole lot different than that. And so I'm kind of ignoring the volatility. I suppose if you're a trader, you know, you can take advantage of that. I don't personally love the idea of day trading AMC. I think people scalp us and hurt the squeeze. Uh, but I understand that that's out there and people do that and you know, I, I suppose it's not immoral or unethical. It, it would only be unethical if you're like me and you say HODL can't be day trading, uh, which is why we had a problem, I think, with some people in 2021. There, there was some bad ethics there, but I won't get into that today. All right, but let's talk about, in light of all these moves, um, what's going on? What's next? So you could see yesterday's video for a lot more detail on this, but I'll just fly by it today, um, just kind of a reminder of where we're at. So there's much higher cost to borrow, more shares on loan, higher short interest, and higher days to cover than when we ran to 72 in June of 2021. So we're, you know, a lot tighter in terms of squeeze metrics. Those are just point of fact, like those are actual just numbers, you can go look them up. Um, capital raising uh, can be used to add value. So capital raising meaning when Adam gets finally his chance to sell some of those 25 million shares that they're saying they're gonna kind of create that program. Um, I documented in the video yesterday. I've talked about it before. I've got a whole video on dilution even that's maybe from about seven months ago, dilution versus value creation, that you can use this money to add more value than the amount of dilution. And he's done it before. See those videos. He's got a track record on this. It's not just stuff I'm making up. This is, he's got quite the track record on it. Um, the business is vastly improving, right? And so that I've got plenty of videos on that. Um, if you want more detail to back that up or just go look for yourself, like look at the domestic box office year over year right now. It's crazy. Um, so you don't need to even see my videos. Just go kind of Google a bit and poke around. Look at Q2's business results. Uh, look at the box office, all of that. And, um, you know, if you're paying attention, you know that there's kind of a liquidity crunch or a credit crunch uh, coming up, you know, and that is something that's going to make it tougher for shorts to hold their position. Interestingly, we saw that with, um, you know, Fidelity going down yesterday. I think that was really interesting. I think some people were saying in your brokers, you had some position close only again with AMC, pretty funky stuff. Um, you know, you could argue that's a coincidence or you could say, hey, something, something is brewing in terms of liquidity right now. And this 
uh, corporate action that's coming up. So, in my opinion, um, you know, support your company. Go to movies, get on the credit card and use that. Um, I'm not talking about getting in credit card debt. Pay it off every month if you can. Um, but use the AMC credit card. Buy gift cards for your friends. Invite friends to movies. Buy the popcorn, right? Like, we can sit here and get frustrated with people attacking us. And, and that's okay. It can stir us up to push back. Uh, but there's also some point where we've just got to take our destiny in our own hands and support this company uh, and help it to be ever more profitable. We got a lot of great movies coming up. The rest of this quarter still looks really awesome. Um, I'm even taking my mom to a couple of these movies. Uh, we just went and saw Turtles with our youngest. That was a lot of fun. We have a great quarter we're in. So always you know, pull up, remind yourself how awesome the industry is doing, um, how awesome AMC is doing. We're going to win, in my opinion. So let's go.